Now, as you might imagine, this code can get really, really complicated very quickly. How can we save it? Well, we could literally just save it. It becomes an SQL file, which in reality is no more than a glorified text file. You could open it in Notepad, and then you can open it for later use. But what if you wanted to save it within the database as opposed to an external text document? Well, we can do that with the views section. So all views are, they are select statements. Nothing more, nothing less. So I'm going to create a new view. So this view, my first view, has. And it's all we need to do. So I'll create view, give the view a name and say as and execute. There we go, command complete, completed successfully. So how can we retrieve that information? Well, first of all, we can refresh our object explorer. We can see the my first. So what do I want to retrieve? If I want to retrieve the results of that view, then I can say select star from my first. So there's my first view. So I execute that, there's results. But suppose I wanted to retrieve the actual SQL code. Then I can right and click on it and go to script view as, and I can use create, uh, drop, select. Drop means delete, by the way, select. So if I select two, you can see that it is telling me what the actual select statement is to get the information back. But if I want what the view is, the sum, all of the warts and all, then I go to select view, create to new query window. And that gives me the text exactly as I had put it in. So there is a difference you can see between select to, which just writes the select statement that I wrote earlier, and create to, which gives me the exact text of the view. Just one note about views. If I was to try and put this into a view, it wouldn't work, not as is. So create view, my second view as, execute, and the reason why is the order by clause can't be used in views. There is some exceptions, but won't go into them here. So I just need to remove that. I'll just comment it out by putting two hyphens at the beginning. I can also press this button here, comment out. And now I can create my view. So to retrieve that, I can go select star from my second view. And then I can say order by and whatever I want to order by. So order by purchase order ID. And you see all the red squiggly underlines. We need to refresh the local cache. So that's one way of saving. The technical name is encapsulating a previously written select statement. Another is by creating a procedure. So instead of saying create view, we say create prog. Prog is procedure. So create prog my first, so create my first prog as, and that's all we need. Now to execute procedures, we don't say select star from my first procedure. Instead, we just say execute my first procedure. So we can use EXEC or we can use the word execute or we could take the word execute out altogether and just say the name of the stored procedure and that will run the results. So that will run, in this case, the select statement. Now, an advantage of a 
procedure is we can have more than one select statement in it. So create prog my second procedure as I'll put this order by back because I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to have order buys in procedures. So now I've got two bits of code in this procedure. It's going to be a simple select from a particular table and then a very simple select statement. So now I've done that, refresh. If I execute my second procedure, you can see that we have two queries being retrieved. And again, if I want the original code, I go to script, create to my query editor window. And that's the exact code that I put in. So two words to encapsulate this, either in views or in procedures.